So getting into like with these projects, like you, you mentioned a couple case studies, one with Copper Mountain, the other with the iron ore processing. So getting into those for the, why does two mass, why does it have an advantage over brute force? Like, especially like, because it seems like there's so many failures in, in that, in the brute force equipment. Yeah, brute force equipment, because it's driven by a pure horsepower, it requires very large wheels, eccentric wheels to drive that machine. So the problem is that because they're such large wheels, they go up when they bring them up to speed and when they turn off the machine and bring them down from speed, it takes a period of time for that to happen. Well, when that occurs, it actually goes into the that or goes into the frequency of the isolation springs. So at startup, it'll lock on the isolation frequency for a period of time and then finally get up to speed. And then it shut down and actually lock on the, the frequency of the isolation for quite a period of time. When that happens, when it locks on that frequency, the entire body of the machine will actually twist. It'll actually corner to corner, or you'll see rotation, you'll see twist. So you'll see a lot of failures in the sidewall of brute force equipment and on the cross beams in brute force equipment. Now on two mass design, you don't see that happen because two mass takes a lot lower horsepower. It's much smaller wheels that are dri driving that force and we're driving it through a natural frequency. So we don't require pure horsepower for that machine to operate properly. So because the wheels are small, they come up to speed almost instantly. It's a matter of a couple of seconds, they're up to speed. And when they come down, you can actually, if you want, and you put a variable frequency drive on it, you can actually plug stop a brute or a two mass machine where you can literally stop it cold and see nothing at shutdown. But even at a normal shutdown, you see very little bounce. You see absolutely no twisting or torsional rotation in the body of the machine. So that's where the longevity comes. So that's why you see a brute force machine failing rapidly and a two mass not. So anybody that's in operation right now that has one of these brute force units, take a look at it because you might you might be able to connect with general kinematics and you might be able to basically offer something that's going to last longer, be more efficient and not have as much basically parts failure. Because even the wheels, I wanted to touch on that. When you're saying the wheels get going, what, what unit is that on? Is that on, do you use that in a lot of your equipment as well? Like you've got small wheels, you said that can kind of fire right away. Yeah, because well, brute force equipment, you actually always see the motor mounted separate from the unit. Yeah. And it's driven from a belt through an eccentric, a shaft that has eccentric weights on it. On two mass, we actually put the motors right on the machine. And on the ends of the motor, there's actually little offset wheels that fan out from each other to increase or decrease how much wheel force you put into it. And uh, the wheels are small. In comparison, they're, they're very small in comparison to the brute force machine.